But I, I, I think Angel Reese is jealous of Caitlin Clark. She thinks she's, you know, the reason why this is all happening here. Caitlin Clark was going to get eyeballs whether she played against Angel Reese in LSU or not. Because we had not seen anything like this before. Her style of play. There's great players in the game. Angel Reese admitted to the entire world why she dislikes Caitlin Clark. It doesn't take a genius to know that Angel Reese isn't the biggest fan of Caitlin Clark. I mean, during the 2023 Women's National Championship game, Angel Reese was taunting Caitlin Clark consistently. These two have an awesome rivalry that have gotten a lot of us much more invested in women's basketball. And obviously, that carried over to the WNBA. While the Indiana Fever, which is Caitlin Clark's team, faced off against the Chicago Sky this past week. And you saw Chen Carter literally tackle Caitlin Clark in the middle of the game. On the bench, you could see Angel Reese celebrating. Following the timeout, you could see Angel Reese hugging Carter and praising her. And once the game concluded, we finally found out why Angel Reese is so bitter towards Caitlin Clark. People are talking about women's basketball, but you never would think that we'd be talking about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games. We got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas. Yeah, the reason why we watching women's basketball is not just because of one person, it's because of me too, and I want y'all to realize that. And finally, the drama in women's basketball Basketball just keeps heating up. Angel Reese, the LSU superstar, recently sent social media into a frenzy with her alleged behavior towards Caitlin Clark that has got fans talking. Even some critics say that Reese is just being a pick me and desperate for attention. We know what mean girls do. We know what the type of bully and we know what like they like they when her teammate, Angel Reese's teammate called her a little biatch, okay? We know how these mean girls act. They're oh I didn't say her name. I didn't say it like that. Petty, petty jealous behavior. But here we go. I made the video earlier. If you haven't seen it, you want to watch it where they did the, the, the fouling um, Angel Reese and her teammate, fouling uh, Caitlin Clark in an absolute disgraceful way, and even the, the teammate calling her little biatch, like I said earlier. But they can't help but you know show their hostility, their rage, their jealousy, and look at me, look at me, look at me. Thirsty as I don't know what to get some type of attention, just hoping that somebody just pays attention to me. The rivalry between Reese and Clark started after Reese's celebratory gesture during the 2023 NCAA Championship. She was subjected to more negative scrutiny than Clark, who had made a similar gesture earlier in the tournament. So I don't know if you knew this, but sometimes in basketball, when things get competitive, when things get heated, players get emotional. And sometimes when that happens, players taunt each other. Apparently it's the first time that Twitter ever found out that this happens in a basketball game. <laughs> I mean, come on, you guys, this is ridiculous. So first of all, taunting should never be acceptable in any walk of life. I mean, taunting is just synonymous with disrespect. And of course, that's not a good thing to throw at other people. And yes, Caitlin Clark was doing it. I don't think it's cool then to taunt. And I don't think it's cool last night when it happened either. But a lot of people are learning that in basketball, sometimes players taunt each other. It's a very common occurrence. But hey, great for press for the women's tournament. But the real commotion started when Reese opened up about the challenges she has faced since winning the national championship with LSU in 2023 in a recent press conference. She said when they look back on history 20 years from now, people will realize that they were not watching women's basketball just because of one person. It all started from the national championship game and I've been dealing with this for two years now. And understanding like, yeah, negative things have probably been said about me, but honestly, I'll take that because look where women's basketball is. People are talking about women's basketball, but you never would think that we'd be talking about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games, we got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas, like just because of one single game. And just looking at that, like I'll take that role. I'll take the bad guy role and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down to history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watch women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too. And I want you all to realize that. OK, if she would have left it with what she had to say right before the last couple of words, I would have been fine with it. She's embraced the villain. She understands social media. She's done quite well 
Uh, she is cashed in, literally cashed in. But her attention, uh, her notoriety is based off Caitlin Clark. Because she wins the national title. First thing she does, she mocks Caitlin Clark. And then she doesn't even celebrate with her teammates. So she's made it personal with Caitlin Clark. Then she's played off of that. Even Caitlin Clark getting knocked down in that game on Saturday, who's standing up applauding but Angel Reese? So she's sort of embraced a Draymond Green role here. Uh, but the eyeballs on the WNBA really have to do with Caitlin Clark. Now, you might, if you stay long enough, maybe you'll see something or someone there you go, okay, I'm entertained by this. But there's nothing wrong with admitting that you watch a sport because of one singular person. People watched golf because of Tiger, right? You tuned in. No matter what event Tiger was playing, you were going to watch. They're still trying to capitalize on him. Playing in the U.S. Open, NBC and Peacock, their graphic has Scotty Scheffler, Rory McIlroy, and then who's looming larger on the screen but Tiger. So they're still trying to squeeze everything they can out of Tiger. Dan Patrick, a well-known sports commentator, has reacted to these comments of Reese that stirred some controversy. Patrick implied that while Reese is a significant player, her prominence in the media and public eye is partly due to her interactions with Clark. This includes their on-court rivalry and moments that have gone viral, such as their competitive exchanges during games. What you're seeing. WNBA has been around a couple of decades. And people didn't notice the game. They're noticing it now. Well, that's because of Caitlin Clark, not Angel Reese. Angel Reese has played a role in this. And she's a, a very good player. But there's nothing about her game that's really interesting that is going to translate to people who may not watch the WNBA, may not care about basketball. She is a social media star, and she has capitalized on that. And maybe she embraces being the villain. But make no mistake about it, Caitlin Clark is the reason why everybody has an opinion on what happened in that game. It's Caitlin Clark. Patrick seemed to suggest that these interactions have amplified Reese's visibility, but that the foundational interest in women's basketball is driven by Clark's standout performances. It's competition. And now everybody has to have an opinion, and now you have got... I, it feels like we're, we ruined it. Like, okay, you wanted our attention, now you got our attention, now you're like, wait, hold on here. Let's not bring in all these other things here. How about can we just watch the game? Can we appreciate the game? Yeah, you know, welcome to life as a woman when men get involved. Yes. We right. got involved and ruined everything. It was going just fine. Yes. But now we jumped in, ruined it, and then we're just going to be like, oh, now you guys figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I don't I don't like the other narrative, like you have the gatekeepers now, like, hey, we've been playing basketball a long time. Where were you? No. Patrick even made a bold comparison by likening Clark to sports legends like Lionel Messi and Tiger Woods. He highlighted her impact on women's basketball, suggesting that her influence and ability to draw viewers are comparable to how Messi and Tiger have elevated their respective sports. Watching because of Caitlin Clark, I didn't watch the MLS. Messi started playing, I watched the MLS. People watching Tiger. Tiger, you know, they didn't play golf, but there was Tiger. There was something about him. You have a singular figure here, but now you have everybody who has to have, there's a referendum here, an opinion. Uh, you think you know the game. Uh, you know what, you know, how are they playing? Oh, they're, they're rougher on her. What, what her teammates need to do is stand up for her. That would st I would start with that. And the commissioner of the WNBA has... Got to take control. Nancy Lieberman, during her appearance on The Dan Patrick Show, expressed high praise for Clark, highlighting her significant impact on women's basketball. Lieberman drew a parallel between Clark's influence and that of Michael Jordan, noting that Clark is receiving the Jordan rules treatment, which signifies the intense defensive focus she attracts from opponents. Caitlin yes. Clark is just different. It, this, a, this is a different stratosphere. Caitlin Clark should be runner-up to Asia Wilson for MVP this season. League value, team value, playoffs, and doing things that we have not seen before by a rookie. Uh, any any problems with any of those comments? No, I, I don't. I, but let me say this. 
she has taken everything that's come her way and she's look what the indiana fever have done since the all-star break i think they're seven and one they've clinched they're 18 and 16. they had not made the playoffs in eight years and she uh you know boston and mitchell are just crushing it right now they've got they've got a lot going on i i give christy sides a, a lot of credit their coach but unfortunately, these discerning comments from Reese are nothing new for Clark. She has always faced backlash from WNBA. Recently, Cheryl Swoops stirred up a lot of discussion by suggesting that Reese is a stronger MVP candidate than Clark. This has added fuel to an ongoing debate among fans, especially given Clark's impressive performance this season. I think Angel will eventually be a good pro. I don't think Angel will come into the league immediately and dominate the way people think she will. And I say that for people who have never watched a WNBA game. It's good. Like there's talent. Like these women can play. And because there are very few roster spots. Like it's a real job. So people look at new players coming in, whether that's out of college, players who've been overseas, and they look at that and say, Oh, you trying to come take my job? Like, nah, it's not gonna be that easy. So will Caitlin Clark be a good pro? Absolutely. Will Caitlin Clark come into the WNBA and do what she's doing right now? Immediately? Absolutely not. Not gonna happen. Okay. Not on the right team? 99% all rookies get the same treatment. There's a few that's Don't coming through history. Him. You can't fuck with them. Look, when LeBron came, fuck they got the yapping. Get him out of here, all of them. Mid-season. All of them. <laughs> Wimby right now, off limits. But I'm saying, I just right? don't so, think that that was ever going on in the league. I think it was just a new environment for her, and now she's figured it out. When you was coming up, you was the best, right? Every team had to send all kind of defenders, all kind of distractions at you, right? So when you in the game and the motherfucker trying to get a rouse out of you, do you ignore that nigga like Caitlyn is doing out there? Yeah, no, I just to tell the same thing out. that Caitlyn doing. So when you built from that, you got to wave that shit off. Like, she bumped her. She could have turned around and been like, yo, what's going on? But this is my house. We just beat y'all ass. Oh, thank you for the, the little kiss you just gave me. <laughs> now, take that ass on to the fucking jet and think about what I just did to you as a rookie. It's going to be a long motherfucking 10 years for these girls out there. <laughs> they don't get their shit together, get that hate out their heart. She not going to take it easy on y'all no more? I wouldn't. However, Cheryl had to face a severe backlash from sports critics like Skip Bayless. In a recent podcast, Skip asserted that claiming Reese is superior to Clark is akin to saying Dennis Rodman was a better player than Michael Jordan. Saying Angel Reese is better than Caitlin Clark is saying Rodman was better than Michael Jordan or Ben Wallace was better than Kobe or even Andre Drummond was better than LeBron. And I shouldn't have to point out that Angel Reese is actually a poor defender. Even Stephen A. Smith called her insane for not appreciating a star like Clark. Actually sparked this, did not start in the beginning of this season. It actually started last year when Caitlin Clark broke the all-time record for the most points in a tournament in college that was previously held by Cheryl Swoops. I set the record in five games, mm -hmm. right? Yeah because back then we had a first round bye. Oh, so okay. we didn't get to play, I didn't get that sixth game. Mm -hmm. So I set the record in five games. Yeah. So to me, yes, she broke the record, but she did it in six games. It took her extra game. Well, I'm just saying. You can say if, that. No, listen, if I, if I have <laughs> six games. The record's different. Well, I'm gonna have another 30 <laughs> to the 177, Jordan. You were, you were Jordan. averaging, what was it? 34? 30, yeah. 34. 30 well, something. 30 and, something. How about that? I mean, we're having a good time. We're having fun. But I don't really care what the record is, who has the record. Stephen Curry has also praised Clark for her incredible shooting range and ability to surprise opponents. He mentioned that Clark's game adds an element of surprise that is hard to plan for, much like his own style. Clark's ability to hit deep three-pointers and her overall playmaking skills have drawn comparisons to Curry, who revolutionized basketball with his long-range shooting. 
Her range, her three-point shooting overall, her flair for testing her range every night and knowing that the other team's going to try to take it away. And she's fearless. No shot is a bad shot, and when you can shoot it as well as she can, she just adds another element of surprise that you can't really game plan for because it's it's so kind of just unseen. And once she crosses half court, she's within her range. It's always a threat. The biggest thing is how she balances that and her playmaking ability to get everybody else involved. Charles Barkley has weighed in on the situation, describing it as petty jealousy among WNBA players towards Clark, the highly touted rookie who recently joined the Indiana Fever. In a fiery segment on his show, Barkley didn't hold back, criticizing veteran players for not supporting Clark as he believes they should. It's sad to see some of these WNBA players acting like they're threatened by Clark, he remarked. Did you ever think you'd be on Inside the NBA talking about the WNBA protecting somebody from violence? No, I thought like, man, these girls getting ready to hit the lottery. I mean, this is a great time to be a woman in the WNBA, Caitlin. I mean, what she's done for the game the last couple of years, she is a shining star. I didn't think she was going to have to worry about all this petty nonsense that's going on. And it's really unfortunate because she's bringing so much notoriety to the game. I watched more college basketball in the last two years, women-wise, I have my entire life. They act like she didn't earn it. They're like, well, she's only getting this shine because she's white. Is race a factor? Yes, race is a factor. But her resume speaks for itself. She just set the record for the most points ever scored. They didn't prop her up just because she was white. Her accolades speak for themselves. And because she's getting endorsements and people are coming to see her, we got this petty jealousy going on, and it's really unfortunate. What are your thoughts on Barclay's comments? Do you think there's merit to his perspective? Well, in the context of the Clark and Reese rivalry, some have discussed whether Clark faces discriminatory behavior because she is white. Call it racism. Here's what I see. I see a white girl out of Iowa, straight two by the way, coming to this league, and this league, which has been around a long time, has never had this much popularity. Black girl gets that same attention. Okay, she's a rookie. She hasn't done it yet. I'm a little aggravated. But the white girl, that is part of the reason why they're so angry. Stephen A. Smith, Matt Barnes, Pat McAfee, all you guys. It's racism. It's that simple. I got the balls to say it. You don't. Meanwhile, Reese claims that she has been the real victim of racism. She has been vocal about the continuous hate she receives, particularly from some fans of Clark. Despite her efforts to clarify that there is no personal animosity between her and Clark, the online attacks have not subsided. All year, I was critiqued about who I was. Nobody, I don't, yeah, 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 the narrative, I don't fit the narrative. I don't fit in the box that y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood, I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. But when other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. So this was for the girls that look like me, that gonna, that's gonna speak up on what they, they believe in. It's unapologetically you. On her podcast, Unapologetically Angel, Reese opened up about the relentless cyberbullying she endures, emphasizing that the vitriol often stems from Clark's fans, who sometimes cross the line into disrespectful and racist territory. Really just the fans, her fans, the Iowa fans, mm -hmm. now the Indiana fans that are like, they ride for her. And I, and I respect that respectfully, but sometimes it's very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of racism when it comes to it. And I don't believe she stands on any of that. But when it comes to death threats, like I'm talking about people have come down to my address, no. follow me home, like it's come down to that. Multiple occasions, people have made AI pictures of me like naked. Literally. Really? They have sent it to my family members. My family members are like, uncles are sending it to me like, no. are you naked on Instagram? It sucks to see that. And it's it's really hard that I have to go through that. And now seeing other players even having to go through that. Um, but like, at the end of the day, it, it's a game that we do both love. Yes, many people have voiced that comparing Reese and Clark isn't fair or necessary, as it detracts from their individual talents and achievements. Both players bring unique skills to the game and have their own distinct playing styles and backgrounds. Critics argue that the constant comparison overshadows their personal accomplishments and reduces the focus on their collective contributions to women's basketball. You 
literally Somalia. go on Twitter and you search Rookie of the Year, Angel Reese, it is like everybody talking about why she's not a good basketball player. Yes, okay, she a lot of her rebounds are her own rebounds, but she's having a historic season just like Caitlin Clark is, and I think that she deserves a lot more credit than what she's getting. Can we stop? See, so that right there is part of the problem. Let's stop comparing her to Caitlin Clark. Like, let's, let's not I'm compare not, her I'm season. seeing people are doing that. You know, I said she's true. having a historic season just like Caitlin Clark. Yeah, but let's Caitlin so, Clark but is that's, setting assist records. She's setting rebound rookie records. They're very different things. And so I think that's where a lot of the hate comes in, if I can be honest. If we really want to resolve Angel receiving as much vitriol as she does, we have to separate the two because right now they are conjoined. But Angel's game is very, very different than Caitlin's. If we're able to stop tying them together, I think way more people will appreciate the things that Angel does well as opposed to defending the greatness that is Caitlin Clark and what she does well. However, Reese recently addressed the rivalry with Clark, stating that despite the intensity of competition, at the end of the day, it's a game that we both love. Reese emphasized that there is no personal hate between them, clarifying that much of the tension is amplified by fans rather than the players themselves. Never realize how something can literally change your life. And knowing my five fingers and my other finger pointing at my hand could literally have changed my life for like, forever mm -hmm. is crazy. And knowing that, like, Kaylin is an amazing player. And I, at the end of the day, it, it's a game that we do both love, but there is no hate, n no hate. We're gonna play on the same team one day, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Like, we're gonna definitely play on the same team one day. Her remarks came as part of broader conversations on sportsmanship and public perceptions surrounding their highly publicized rivalry. What do you think of this rivalry? Let me know in the comments.